So here's the thing, polarization is actually really, really cool. You know that light has this electric field that's going up and down like that, and you know it's got this magnetic field that's normal to it, like this, going side to side in our picture all the time. And, uh, well, polarization seems to be affecting the electric field. Let me see if I can justify how polarization works for you. Polarization is, polarization filters, oh man, that's how Polaroid got its name also? Polarization, you can get polarized sunglasses, it's all the same thing. <clears throat> a polarization filter is a filter that looks generally pretty boring, it just seems to cut out some of the light. Turns out it's cutting out almost exactly half of the light at this point right here. And the polarization filter is a whole bunch of, I think they're organic molecules that are lined up in very, very thin rows, very close to each other. In fact, a polarization filter to this guy, if the polarization filter is oriented like this, then it has molecules lined up that will allow the electric field to go through there and then the light comes out all happy like and the magnetic field doesn't even notice. It's just like shh, shh, shh. the electric field is just fine coming through there. So here's our electric field and that's the only one that we'll be concerned about. As the wave goes through the polarization filter, there's no problem at all. But what if this wave that just made it through that polarization filter comes through a new polarization filter and this guy is oriented at a right angle? So that's interesting. What I'm gonna propose is that the electric field can no longer get through there. In fact, it's sort of shorted out. It is really an electrical thing because the field can shake this direction. It cannot shake in a normal direction to that. And so what we find is if we've already got light that's polarized. So I'm saying that light coming off of this sheet of paper here is not polarized. But if I put a polarization filter down, then the resulting light that comes here, this is complicated. I got a lamp over here to my left and it's hitting the paper. And the light that's coming off there is not polarized. But if it hits the paper and then comes back through the polarization filter, then it's polarized on its way back out. So I'm gonna get another polarization filter and I'm going to say that if we put it, oh my goodness, I put that polarization filter down and you see that from this region here where the polarization filters are both acting on the light that hit that paper, you can't see anything at all. But let's say if I turn this polarization filter 90 degrees from that, we can see, whoa, that was pretty. Now you see that you've got two polarization filters lined up parallel to each other, and so there's no effect. And I'm gonna go crazy, here, let's say, say goodbye to, to Newton here. Here we go, ready, ready, here he goes. Ready, oh boy. Wait a second, why can we still see Newton? Oh, I know, it's because we've got that lamp. So here's my point. You cannot see Newton if he's underneath here. He's underneath the lower one. And I'm gonna turn it like this, ready, ready? Bye bye Newton, he's completely gone. All right, <clears throat> but what if, what if these guys are parallel? <clears throat> now let's, let's get a little bit of science behind this before we start doing some more experiments. I want to argue that if I've got a, an electric field that's like this and a polarization filter that's at some weird angle, like this or something, the polarization filter is angled a little bit, the electric field wants to go straight up and down, and the axis of the polarization filter is this direction, then the angle between them is what matters. And I'm going to say that the electric field that gets through is the electric field initial times the cosine of the angle between the initial electric field and the polarization filter. Because it's like, it's like I'm gonna be taking the component of the existing electric field that's along the polarization direction because it's just a little bit of trigonometry. I'm just gonna take that cosine right there. But remember that the actual light intensity, like energy density, is proportional to electric field square. So we know, well, it's called the law of malice. It turns out not malice, but malice. 
And the law of malice turns out that we're just gonna be squaring this to find out what intensity of light gets to make it through. And I wanna show you that this is definitely not a linear effect. It is definitely a square of the cosine of the angle. Watch this, tons of light through, still a lot of light through, still a lot of light. I mean, it's a 45 degree angle, but it's not half as much light as this. There's a lot of light coming through here and there's pretty much no light at all getting through right now from that section right there. But polarization is really beautiful because <clears throat> if I change the polarization direction of the light in between this filter and this filter, then something beautiful happens. Watch this. I have a typical protractor. It's not so cool now. Here, let's put it in there. Oh, no, here, I've got a nice brand new one, except for the big crack on the bottom. And I'm gonna put it in here. Wait for it. You ready? Putting it in between the two of them. <gasps> and it is suddenly stunning. Look at the beautiful shapes. It turns out that plastic is changing the polarization of the light. And if you have polarized sunglasses, you already know this. You can look around at people's windshields and see a magical world that you never thought existed. You know more physics. Whoa, I can even see, look, I can see what's written on the page below it because I'm changing the polarization with this protractor. Look at that, there's, see there's my wave. Look at my wave right there. I can see it now through there. That's some beautiful physics. I got some more things that I wanted to try. That one's not too interesting. This guy is a little bit, in, look at those beautiful colors. Yeah, and this is also a way to measure stress and strain in the plastics because, well, I mean, this is an engineer's method of measuring stress and strain because as you stress it, you're changing the angle of it and you're changing the uh, thickness of it and you can get different colors to appear as you stress it differently. So I uh, also thought I'd throw in a little bit of tape dispenser. Look at that sucker right there, see that? And you can see through it. It's really beautiful right there. So please play around with polarization a little bit. I know my students are about to do a lab on polarization, but polarization is absolutely wonderful. We could talk about why polarized sunglasses work, but I think I'll just do that in class. Let me know if you wanna see a video on that. Good luck.